Far from the sun's protective rays, the fringe of our solar system appears to be cold, empty, and gloomy area. For a long time, the vast distance between us and the nearest stars was believed to be a terrifyingly enormous stretch of emptiness. Until recently, it was a place that humans could only see from afar. Two spacecraft created and launched in the 1970s have been beaming back our first sights of this weird zone we call interstellar space. Over the past few years, they are the first man-made objects to exit our solar system, traveling into new terrain billions of kilometers away. No other spacecraft has traveled as far as this one. Prior to Voyager, little was understood about space. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, the solar system's giants, were unclear. Despite the fact that spacecraft visited Jupiter and Saturn as part of the Voyager mission, little was learned until the mission was completed. Uncertainties were removed when spacecrafts were able to acquire and relay data back to Earth. And this interaction formed many of the ideas we know today. NASA's Voyager 2 entered interstellar space in November 2018, becoming just the second spacecraft to enter interstellar space. Decades after the celestial departure, scientists have further unveiled what Voyager 2 saw as it passed the threshold, and it's providing humanity with greater new insights into some of our solar system's biggest mysteries and stunning discoveries, which is what we will be looking at today. And hey, we're giving away $100 to one of our random subscribers. All you have to do is watch the entire video, comment with your biggest takeaway, like, share, and finally subscribe. So without further ado, let's get started. For more than 40 years, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have been exploring our solar system, unraveling the secrets of the outer planets and discovering new moons. We're still getting data from the Voyager probes as they begin their historic voyage through interstellar space. NASA launched the twin Voyager spacecraft in 1977 to explore the furthest limits of our solar system. The space agency was still in its early stages at that time. Voyager 2 was the first to leave Earth, followed by Voyager 1. They were not the first spacecraft to reach the nearest of the large planets. Pioneers 10 and 11 took that title. The Voyagers, on the other hand, were more sophisticated than the Pioneers and made several unexpected discoveries. Voyager 1 had a shorter path than Voyager 2 and arrived at Jupiter first in 1979, discovering erupting volcanoes on the planet's colorful moon. Voyager 1 flew by Saturn in 1980, observing fine details in the planet's rings and discovering the first nitrogen atmosphere outside Earth around the moon, Titan. Voyager 2 followed a more scenic visiting Jupiter in 1979 and Saturn in 1981 before moving on to Uranus and Neptune in 1986 and 1989 respectively. Voyager 2 captured stunning images of the green and blue planets as well as gazers on Neptune's enormous moon Triton. Voyager 2 continues to send data and what is remarkable about it is that scientists will have some measure of interstellar space for the first time. Given its current distance, radio communication with it takes more than 16.5 hours one way. Every probe carries a golden record containing snapshots of Earth sounds, images, and messages with the hope that another species may come across it and learn about human civilization. On April 24, 1979, Voyager 2 began transmitting stunning photos of Jupiter for time-lapse movies of atmospheric circulation. Unlike Voyager 1, it made close passes by the Jovian moons on its route into the system, with scientists particularly keen in learning more about Europa and Io. During its flyby, it sent back amazing images of the entire Jovian system, including its moons Callisto, Ganymede, Europa, Io, and Amalthea, all of which had already been examined by Voyager 1. 
The earlier pioneers discovered little atmospheric changes from one flyby to another, but Voyager 2 detected numerous substantial changes, including a drift in the Great Red Spot, as well as changes in its shape and color. Long-distance observations of the planet began on November 4, 1985, when signals took about 2.5 hours to reach Earth. The amount of light was 400 times less than on Earth. The closest approach to Uranus occurred at 1759 UT on January 24, 1986, at a distance of approximately 50,640 miles. During its flyby, Voyager 2 detected 10 new moons, 2 new rings, and a magnetic field tilted at 55 degrees off-axis and off-center. The spacecraft discovered wind speeds of up to 450 miles per hour in Uranus' atmosphere, as well as evidence of a boiling ocean of water 497 miles underneath the upper cloud surface. Its rings were discovered to be highly varied in thickness and opacity. Miranda, Oberon, Ariel, Umbriel, and Titania. Five of Uranus' bigger moons were also photographed by Voyager 2. The spacecraft got closest to any object in its nearly decade-long journey when it flew by Miranda at a distance of only 17,560 miles. Images of the moon revealed a bizarre object with a jumble of odd features that appeared to have no rhyme or explanation. Uranus itself appeared to be devoid of features. On August 25, 1989, at 3.56 UT, Voyager 2 sailed about 2,980 miles over the cloud tops of Neptune, the closest of its four flybys capping a 4.3 billion mile trip. It was the planet's first human-made craft to fly by. At the time, all 10 of the instruments were operational. Six new moons and four new rings were identified by the spacecraft during the flyby. With winds of 680 miles per hour, the planet was discovered to be more active than previously thought. Although copious methane gave the planet its blue hue, hydrogen was discovered to be the most frequent atmospheric element. Voyager 2 spent its time on the Jupiter part of its trip, exploring the massive planet. It uncovered a 14th moon and revealed the planet's ring's third component. It provided another close-up view of Saturn and its moons on its journey to Saturn. It was able to observe the rings of the planet at a much higher resolution and discover many more ringlets. It also revealed further details about the spokes and kings of the ring, as well as the F-ring and its shepherding moons. Finally, it used a gravity assist maneuver at Saturn to help it get to Uranus. Voyager 2 is also the only spacecraft to have visited all four gas giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and discovered 16 moons, as well as phenomena such as Neptune's seemingly ethereal great dark spot, breaches in Europa's ice shell, and ring structures on each. It was also the first spacecraft to visit Uranus after flybys of Jupiter and Saturn. It revealed 10 new moons, 2 new rings, and a magnetic field that is unusually angled and stronger than Saturn's. The spacecraft was driven toward its next destination, Neptune, via a gravity assist at Uranus. Neptune was only ever been visited by one man-made object, Voyager 2. In its closest approach to the planet, the spacecraft traveled less than 3,100 miles above its cloud tops. As a result, it found five moons, four rings, in a great dark spot that was gone when the Hubble Space Telescope saw Neptune five years later. Triton, Neptune's largest moon, was discovered to be the coldest known planetary body in the solar system with a nitrogen ice volcano on its surface. The two Voyager probes have now confirmed that plasma in local interstellar space is substantially denser than plasma in heliosphere, just as scientists predicted. The temperature of plasma in adjacent interstellar space has now been measured by Voyager 2 and verified to be cooler than plasma inside the heliosphere. 
Voyager 2 has also noticed a modest rise in plasma density shortly before exiting the heliosphere, indicating that plasma is squeezed at the inside border of the bubble. However, experts are still unsure what is producing the compression on either side. Voyager 2 is now 18 billion kilometers away, while Voyager 1 is 21.6 billion kilometers away providing a measure of how far the Sun's empire stretches. In terms of the reach of heliospheric particles, or particles from the Sun, both spacecraft are practically outside of it, but they still have a complex path to take to avoid the effects of solar gravity. NASA's Voyager missions have been a huge success. Originally designed to last five years, they each lasted nearly eight years and changed human understanding of the solar system during those four decades. The two spacecraft are expected to float around in space for billions of years and may represent the only evidence of human civilization in outer space for a future advanced society. As the Voyager twins continue on their travels through interstellar space, they are tasked with one final mission greeting extraterrestrial civilizations.